resurrection. We spoke of Jesus' physical resurrection and our metaphorical resurrection. Jesus defeating death and, and us rising from our dead situations. Many of us have beat the odds and become what few expected us to become. People had checked our posts and found no life in us, no joy, no peace, no hope, and locked us in a tomb. Uh, our tombs of brokenness, our tombs of disappointment, our tombs of disillusion, disillusionment. And, and if you can name the tomb and left us there for dead. But God, resurrecting power, uh, lifted us from our dead situation and allowed us to live again. Jesus' exit from the tomb uh, is God saying to us, I, I forgive you uh, for whatever you've done. I, I forgive your sins. Your, your sins are forgotten and your life is redeemed. Uh, it, it is God speaking to us and reminding us that God can do a new thing with us. Resurrecting power makes us brand new. It makes us different. It makes us look, like, look unlike we used to look. Uh, some of the time, people will think that you are you who you used to be. But I, I'm so glad a change has come over me. C coming, coming, coming out of the grave means you have defeated your dead circumstances. You, you, you have overcome your lifeless existence. When, when, when you are resurrected in God, something brand new happens to you. Your, your resurrection will not be televised. It, it will be hidden by, it will be hidden from the haters. It, it will be disregarded by the doubters and it will be dismissed by the disingenuous. As you walk in your newness, people will not recognize you. They, they will try to put you in the box that they made for you, the, the box that they placed you in, the, the box that they want you to stay in. They, 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 they will uh, put you in a room and lock the door and throw away the key, visiting when they want to. The novel, the novel, Love in the Ruins, uh, Walker Percy, he wrote these words, now in these dreaded latter days of the old violent beloved U.S. of A. and of the uh, Christ forgetting and the Christ haunting death dealing western world, I came to myself in a grove of young pines. We, we, we live in a country that, that claims that claims to know Jesus. Uh, that, that claims to know the Messiah. We, 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 we live in a country that, that says that, that it knows Jesus quite well. Uh, uh, but, but, but the reality is we, we're haunted by Jesus, yet this nation has forgotten who Jesus is. Has forgotten who Jesus is and, and who Jesus calls us to be. We, we make movies and television specials about Jesus. You know the Passion of Christ that was made around 2004 by Mel Gibson and the Da Vinci Code that Tom Hanks just starred in uh, all about Jesus. The Shack uh, with o uh, Olivia Spencer and, and, and CNN even made a documentary about finding Jesus. All of these point to our fascination with Jesus. Uh, more than 70% of Americans self-identify as Christians. And almost 80% will agree with the statement that Jesus is the Son of God. Yet, yet all of those self-identifying believers, only about half of them, will sit up in a Sunday service. We will sit up in a Saturday Sabbath. Uh, uh, very few participate in the church as we know it. Regardless of these high numbers, we, we are a nation with some with some of the highest criminal rates. We execute execute the most people. In Arkansas, there's a push to execute seven brothers. 
to, to execute seven people because drugs are about to expire and they're wondering if they'll have a hard time uh, getting the drugs needed to crucify these people. We, we, we live in a nation where the wage gap between the haves and the have-nots is higher than any other place in the world. We, we live in a place where there are more people in prison than even in college in some places. We, we, we live in a place, we live in a place in, in a nation where the homicide rate outnumbers any other industrialized nation in the world. Yet, we say we're a Christian nation. Yet we say we follow the Messiah. Yet we say that we are followers of Jesus. We, we, we see images of Christ on the big screen and even on the little, little screen. Now, Christ hunts us. Christ is everywhere we look. We see bumper stickers. We, we see it everywhere on t-shirts, on church billboards and signs. But yet we forget Christ daily. We forget who he is and how he lived. Many of many of us, we, we came with like the author, like the author I mentioned. We we came to ourselves on a farm of our youth or, or in the big city, in a massive structure in the city. We we came to ourselves, we came to who we are as little child, and we, we came to know Jesus in that same space. But the Jesus that you learned about in school, the Jesus that you learned about in Sunday school and church is not the Jesus that you probably need right now. The, the, the Jesus that, that we met a long time ago is probably not the Jesus that we need right now. I know somebody, somebody is wondering, well, well it, 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 I met Jesus and Jesus don't change. Uh, well, God doesn't change, but you should help me, Holy Ghost. And, and because you've gone through some situations, you should know just a little bit more about Jesus. Uh, you, you should have a better understanding of who Jesus is. Uh, you know the Jesus that you met when you were laying on your back in the hospital. You, you may have not known that Jesus as a child. That, that Jesus that you met when you were going through that breakup, you, you may have not known that Jesus then. And, and so you, you have come to terms with this brand new uh, Jesus. We have to come to turn and, and really understand, do we really know Jesus? Are we really walking with Jesus. We, we, we have met Jesus, but do we really know Jesus? We, we have communed with Jesus, but are we in relationship with Jesus? We, we have heard his words, but do we know his voice? We have read about him, but do we recognize him? We have traveled with him, but have we journeyed with him? We, we have heard him, but do we listen to him? In, in, in that vein, I want to tag this text. I want to tag this text. Jesus, walk with me. Jesus, walk with me. See, the text, the text tells us that two disciples, two followers of Jesus were leaving town, headed to Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. Now, now nobody really knows where this Emmaus is. Some say it was northwest. Some say it was southwest. Most think it was southwest because, uh, because Emmaus means uh, warm springs in ancient Hebrew. It means warm springs. And so the village that was southwest had warm springs. And, and so here they are. They're leaving after Passover. You, you know how you go visit family uh, for, for a, a, an event at, or for Christmas or Easter and you make your journey back on that Monday. Where, well, most folk were leaving Jerusalem on that day. Uh, that, that the Passover was over and the Sabbath had ended. It was time to hit the road. Emmaus, Emmaus was just some seven miles. It doesn't say why they were going. 
to Emmaus. We, we, we don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe they just needed a spa day. After all that somebody's gone. <laughs> after all they had gone through, after the crucifixion, after wondering if he was going to rise, maybe, maybe, maybe they just needed to get away. But one could speculate, one, one could speculate that, that they were running for their lives. That, that they were afraid that what happened to him might happen to me. What happened to him? If, if they got him, then they may be coming to me, for me. The disciples were seeking to get away from a troubling situation. They were walking, talking about the events of the past few days. And Jesus walks up and joins the conversation without them realizing who Jesus is. I, I, I had to ask myself, why, why didn't the disciples recognize who Jesus was? But, but then I, I realized that Jesus walked in here right now. Many of us wouldn't recognize who he is either. If Jesus, if Jesus came and sat on the front row, we'll tell him to move. Help. And then, 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 I, then I realized, I realized many of us, we, 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 we have difficulty recognizing Jesus. We, we, we have difficulty recognizing Jesus because of a few things. You see, I, I think one of the reasons we don't recognize Jesus is because, you see, I, I think they failed, the disciples, they, 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 failed to, they, they failed to see Jesus because of false perceptions of failure. They, 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 they also were fear, they had this fearful insight and, and, and then they had this faithless outlook. Let, let me break it down. See, see, this false perception of failure. See, in, in, in what they saw in the 28th, in the 28th chapter of Matthew verses 11 through 15, and that guard report told them that Jesus had failed. And, 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 and so even though the women came back and told them that he's risen, that they saw a vision of angels, they didn't believe. And so so that they, 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 they had this false perception. You know, you know how it is. See, the thing is, America has convinced us that failure is an option for us. Uh, uh, that failure is an option for us. See, America has convinced us that we should fail, that, that we should not succeed. So, so they paint this picture of all of the failing statistics in our community. And, and so I, I'm sure, I'm sure the disciples, the disciples, they, they live in this mindset that, that if Rome didn't say it, then it must not be true. You know how you know how we you know how we do. If, if Rome didn't say it, it must not be true. And, and even in our personal lives, we we think that failure is an option. We we're okay with failing. We we're okay with failing. We, we well if I fail, so what? It, it, well if he fails, well he'll just go to summer school. Y'all y'all know y'all know what I'm talking. About. My mama, if I fail, she might have put me out the house. <laughs> Particularly if I was talking in class. So it's this false perception of failure. That these disciples, the disciples figured they had failed because Jesus was crucified. And, and so because he was crucified and he was buried and they hadn't seen the body of the risen, the, of the risen Christ, they figured they had failed. And, and, and so Jesus walking up to them. Jesus walking up to them, because, because their eyes was glossed with failure, they couldn't even see who they were walking with. They, 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 you, you know how you failed in your life? And then your kids say they're going to do something? I know nobody in here does that. But the, your kids say they're going to do something? And then you try to talk them out of it? Because you failed? You, your, your kids say, I'm, I'm going to start a business, and you try to talk them out of it? <laughs> I, I know there's nobody in here. And, and so this false perception of failure, but, but also I, I, I think that they were blinded by, by this fearful insight. This, 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 see, see, 
Jesus was put on the cross. And, and, and if, if you put that in, uh, in modern day language, he was lynched. And, and, and a lynching has one purpose. It's not to kill the person. It's to create fear in the community. It is to create fear in the... See, the purpose wasn't to kill Jesus. The purpose was to make sure nobody else rose up against Rome. The disciples were, li were leaving Jerusalem because they were afraid. Because they were afraid what might happen to them because they were hanging with Jesus. We're reminded of Peter. When, when, when Peter, Peter, here it is. A young lady, a, a, a person who has very little, a slave girl, asked him, weren't you one of the ones with Jesus? And he denies Jesus three times because he's afraid. The disciples who are walking on that road to Emmaus, they're so afraid that they can't see who Jesus is. They, let, let me break that down for you. Some of the time, you are so afraid you are so afraid of what might happen that you can't see what will happen. Yeah. It, it, you, you, you're so afraid that you're going to fail, that it's going to mess up, that it's not going to turn out the way you want it to, that, that you can't, you, you, you're stuck and you're paralyzed by your fears. God, God is telling you to do something, and you're afraid. You, you, you are afraid. God is, God is telling you, say, you know what? You, 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 you know what? You need to speak for such and such, or you need to do such and such, or you need to lead a group, or whatever the case may be. Well, I'm afraid to talk in front of people. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. You, you're afraid. You, you're trapped. And so your fear stops you from seeing Jesus. It is stopping you from experience, experiencing God in God's totality. See, people of African descent, we, 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 it, there has been a tactic from our very existence in these here United States to make us afraid, to make us afraid, to make us scared to live out our purpose, to make us afraid to be all that God wants us to be. And everything within this nation's power that this nation can use, it has used to make us afraid, to make us fearful, to live and be all that God has called us to be. Some of us are afraid to act. Some of us are afraid to live in our call. Some of us are so afraid to, to be all that God wants us to be. And, we, 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 and so we can't see Jesus working in our lives. But, but the other thing is that this, this false perception of failure, this fearful insight, and this faithless outlook, this faithless outlook, what, what do you mean? In, 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 verse, in verse 24, 21, and 25, it, 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 it sets it up because here it is, that this faithless outlook, our faith is dictated by our circumstance. Yeah. Wait, wait, let me let me let me say that one again. It, our faith. So our faith, we, we might be in a bad situation and we let that bad situation dictate our faith. Y'all yeah, still not getting it. Your faith it, it is it, it, it's not it's not determined by how God brought you through last year. It's determined by what's happening right now. And so you're so stuck on what's happening right now that you have no faith. You, you, you're not thinking about, well, if God brought me through it then, surely God can bring me through it now. If God did it then, surely God can, wait, wait, if God did it for mama, Surely God can't do it now. We, we, we've been victims of, of defeat for so long that, that oftentimes we have very little faith. That, that there are young men walking around right now, and I used to be one of them, wondering if they will make 30. That, 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 they, they just hoping 
that they get the 30. They, 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 they don't have faith. And they, they don't have they, 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 the faith and, and the vision to see that God can take me anywhere I want to go. I, I, the, the television and the mass media and, and those around us have made us faithless. We, we listen to what people say. Some of us have given up and we've given in to the enemy. Yes. We, we just say, you know what? All right, enemy, you can have it. You, you've won. Right. You, you've won. But, but to, true, to, to truly know Jesus, we, we must be familiar with the person of Jesus. We, we must be familiar with the person of Jesus and the attributes of Jesus. See, those on the road with Jesus uh, 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 allow the world around them to define Jesus for them. Uh, and not their personal interactions with Jesus to determine who he was, but, but the world. They, they allow Rome to define who he was. So, so because Rome put him in a tomb, then he must be dead. Uh, because Rome did this, then he must not be alive. We, we fail to see Jesus in our lives because we are going by what we heard and not what we experienced. Uh, we, we, we're going by, we, we going by mama's Jesus. We would not go, oh, I wish you all were praying with me this morning. For, for many in America, Jesus is someone you met, you meet on Sunday morning. And you call on when you need him. That, that's the only time we experience Jesus. We, we experience Jesus when we come to church and when we need it. Oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. Jesus is capital in our lives, not the captain of our lives. Let, let, let me say that one again. Jesus is capital in our lives, not the captain of our lives. He, he's the lender we call on, not the leader of uh, the, we depend on. Uh, uh, I, maybe I need to say that one again. See, he, he's the lender we call on, not the leader we depend on. Those on the road to Emmaus, uh, uh, those two disciples had to recognize some of the attributes of the person of Jesus. To, to, to truly walk with him and recognize who he is. And the first, first thing they had, they had to recognize is that, that one of the attributes of Jesus is Jesus is a kingdom builder. Oh. Jesus is a kingdom builder. See, see, the, the thing is, in, in, in that 24th chapter, in that 19th verse, it talks about the prophets. And, and one of the things about a prophet, a prophet was always concerned about building the kingdom of God. And, and so because Jesus was one of the prophets, he was concerned about ushering in the kingdom of God. Too many of us, too many of us, we, we're busy trying to build our own personal palaces and we forgot about the kingdom of God. I, I need to say that again for somebody. Too too many of us, we're concerned about stacking our ends and, and not building the kingdom of God. Uh, what, what does it say? It says, seek first the kingdom of God and then all else will be added unto you. Jesus thought to make the world a better place for all those around him. He sought to build the kingdom of God. To see Jesus, one must envision the kingdom. I mean, the only way you're going to recognize who Jesus is, is you're going to have to be able to see the kingdom that he's trying to build. Jesus was a kingdom builder, but, but also Jesus was a word deliverer. Nah, Jesus was a kingdom builder and a word deliverer. See, Jesus delivered the word of God in that 24th chapter, that 26th and 27th verse. To recognize the word, one must be familiar with the word. I, I like what John says in the 10th chapter, the 27th verse. He says, my sheep listen to my voice. Wait, wait, y'all just missed that. See, Jesus is, is, is saying, if, 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 if you read my word, then you know what I'm saying. And if you read my word, you know what I'm saying. Jesus is, is, is speaking, but, but they, they, they don't necessarily hear. Uh, you see, you have to read the word to understand the voice of God. You, you have to read the word to understand and be in relationship with the voice of God. The two disciples, the, the two disciples, what, what they heard, they, they heard fear. They heard disappointment. They heard defeat. But, but when you read the scripture, when you read the scripture and you know that no weapon formed against me, what well, then, then, then you can hear what Jesus is saying. To, to hear Jesus, one must know the word. That means you got to read your Bible some of the time. You, you got to be in your word. You got to understand the word to be able to hear a word from God. See, Jesus was, Jesus was a kingdom builder. He was a word deliverer, but also he was a hope giver. He 
was a hope giver. See, that their, their heart burned with hope. Wait, what does it say in that 32nd verse? It says, their heart burned with hope. Their, their heart, wait, wait. It, 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 if it ain't giving you hope, then it ain't Jesus. If it ain't giving you, if it ain't lifting you up, it ain't Jesus. Hope is always present in the voice of Jesus. Hope is always present in what God is saying. We, we, we hear, we see, what we do is, we oftentimes, we hear hopelessness when, when God is saying, I just hope in me and, and everything will come to pass. We, 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 we are so caught up in, 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 in the hurt that we can't see the hope. But, but Jesus is a hope giver. Jesus is a hope giver, always speaking to the people. Uh, the, the, the Jesus you met 20 years ago might not be the same Jesus. But when Jesus is walking with you, uh, yeah, yeah, some, some, some things happen to you. The, 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 when, when Jesus is walking to you with you, the, the thing is, you know Jesus is walking to, with you, and, and, and you know that you're on a journey with Jesus because, one, Jesus always listens. <laughs> Jesus, in that 25th verse, uh, Jesus listened to their concerns. It, it didn't say Jesus just came in and started offering advice. Jesus listened to their concerns. Don't you know that whatever you might be going through, if you just speak it, don't you know that Jesus is listening to your concern? Jesus is working to make your life a little bit better. Uh, Jesus is always listening. But, but the other thing is Jesus is always leading you down the path that you need to go. You know, Jesus is always leading you the place that you need to go. Jesus walked with them. Jesus talked with them. Jesus was leading them down the path that they need to go. And then Jesus, Jesus, Jesus always lets us us invite him in. Now, it says in that 29th verse, it says Jesus was about to go further, but, but Jesus waited, waited for them to invite him to stay. And don't you know that when you invite Jesus in, wait, wait, that, so, so they were leaving Jerusalem. They were running from Jerusalem. But when you invite Jesus in, hold up, hold up. So it says they turned around and went back. Wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so that means that when you invite Jesus in, you get a little courage. Uh, you, you, you're not concerned about what might happen because you know that God's will will happen. Uh, you, you, you're unconcerned. And they turned around and went back to Jerusalem to, to tell their brothers and sisters whom they had met. When you know Jesus, you'll hear Jesus' voice. You, you'll hear Jesus' voice. You'll recognize when you are in Jesus' presence. But the only way that we can know Jesus is we have to spend some time with Jesus. We have to make an effort to get to know him. We, we have to make an effort to get to know him. He's not going to force himself on us. He just wants us to invite him in. He wants us to invite us in. I, I like what Kanye West says. He, 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 in Jesus walks. You, you know I had to throw some hip hop up in here. He says, God, show me the way because the devil is trying to break me down. And, 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 and that is uh, so relevant because here it is. The devil is always trying to knock you down. But he says, Jesus, walk with me. The only thing that I pray is that you keep my feet from falling. I want you, Jesus, walk with me. I, I don't know that there is nothing I can do now that's right, that will right my wrongs. But Jesus, walk with me. I want Jesus, I want to talk to God, but I've been, I'm afraid because I hadn't spoken in so long. God, show me the way because the devil is trying to break me down. I, I, I like what Kanye says. I, I like what Kanye says because he's asking Jesus to walk with him. This song that, that really put him on the map. This, this song that changed his entire life. He was doing, he was promoting, he, he was producing music, he was behind the scenes, but when he made this, this changed his world. And, and, and really that song is saying, 
Jesus, walk with me wherever I go. Be with me wherever I go. He, he goes into, he said, that Jesus walks with the drug dealers and the prostitutes. He said, whomever you are, just ask Jesus to walk with you. Just, just ask Jesus to walk with you. I, I, I just had to go to a hymn. I just had to go to a hymn. Walk with me. I, and, 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 and I like what it says. It says, walk. He said, I want Jesus to what? walk with me. I, I want Jesus to walk with me. With me all along the way, all my pilgrim's journey. I, I, I just want Jesus to walk with me. In my trials, walk with me. If, if, if we, we got to understand that if we just allow Jesus to walk with us, and we recognize who Jesus is. Yeah, we, we, if we truly recognize who Jesus is, yeah, then we can truly invite Jesus to walk with us. Yeah, we can truly allow Jesus to do something with us that is beyond our belief. Yeah. God is calling every person in yeah. this place yeah. to be more than you really are. Yeah. To be more and, and, and bigger than who you really are. Yeah. Then God, 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 God has a call on every individual yeah. in this church. Yeah. And, and I don't care how old you are or how young you are. I, I, I stopped by to tell you that, that there's no retirement in God. And, and, and if I'm so fortunate, if I'm so blessed to preach your eulogy, that's your retirement. Amen. That, that, that is your retirement. And so as long as you got breath in your body, as long as you got strength in your limbs, Jesus is saying, walk with me. Walk with me. And we have to invite Jesus to walk with us. Stand to your feet. Stand.